desire. No one else will do. No one else will do. Because nothing else can take your place. Because nothing else can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. the way help me find the way bring me back to you you're all singing you're all I want let's hear the church you're all I want you're all I've ever needed you're all Never let me go. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. I Our surrender for all this morning. Again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. You are my desire. And no one else. Nothing else can take your place. Cause nothing else can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way. Bring me back to you. Help me find the way. Bring me back to you.
anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens. Come and lay down the burdens you have For in the sanctuary. God is here. There is a sweet anointing. There is a sweet, sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and let it go. him to take this morning? Is there a yoke that needs to be broken this morning? Indeed, there is a sweet anointing in the presence of the Lord. And he invites us to come and lay down. So today, we are encouraged to leave it all today at his feet. He says, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. So whatever it is that is weighing us down today, whatever it is that is weighing you down today, there's nothing that he cannot do. There's no mountain that he cannot move. And he has a track record of keeping his word. So we know the God whom we are praising this morning. And we believe and we know that nothing is impossible with our God. He is here. He is here. To break the yoke and lift your heavy burden. To break the yoke and lift your heavy burden. He is here. He is here to heal the hopeless heart and bless the broken. the 
the presence. Stands. One Savior crucified, risen, and coming back again with life and liberty to all who believe.
You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, potential brothers and sisters, those in-house and those viewing online, happy Sabbath. You feel, you feel the happy Sabbath coming out? I don't think they feel it because I know when it's Sabbath, we are all happy that we don't have any housework to do. We don't have anything to do. All we have to do is to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And so with that, we have that extra energy. We have that extra zeal. And so I'm going to, I'm going to repeat it as maybe not everyone heard. Brothers and sisters, potential brothers and sisters in house and online, happy Sabbath. Amen. Now, I am Sister White, and with me is Sister Chamberlain, and it is our pleasure to be cheering this morning's um, program, right? Right, and let us, this is an unofficial welcome because the real welcome coming after, but we would like to unofficially welcome you to the E. St. Mary Adventist Youth Federation Consecration Service under the theme Faithful youth ready for mission. Faithful youth ready for mission. And we know if there's anything that we have in East St. Mary is we have faithful youth. Amen? Do we have faithful youth in East St. Mary? If we look around the room, I think we can find more youth than adults. And for those who aren't yet ready, we will work along with each and every one and we'll make every youth ready for mission. Amen? Which means it's going to take me and it's going to take everybody else, right? Amen? Amen. 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 At this time, we will be... Yes, let us stand, please. And we will be having our call to worship. And this will come to us from number 858. Give unto the Lord. Eight five eight. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The church is now called to worship. Heavenly Father and our God, this morning it is indeed with grateful hearts that we assemble in your courts of praise. We pray, O oh God, that today as we worship and as we celebrate your goodness, that heaven will come down and glory will fill this place. I pray that you will fill each heart today in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. Just now you had the unofficial welcome, but at this time you will be getting the official one, the one that will have you feeling as if you are really in the presence of the Lord. Amen? And to officially welcome us, we have Brother Kevin Scarlett and Sister Nolan. Brother Kevin, the name just called Brother Kevin. Hurry up, Brother Kevin. What my name? Oh, yes, it's a carry just call your name. Oh, it's a welcome. All right, guess what? I am going to welcome the people. And afterwards, I just call Sister Nolan. Because Sister Nolan name called to you, know. So, Brother Kevin, you go welcome them. And then Sister Nolan come in and do his part. All, all right, all right, Brother Kevin. Welcome. 
to the Anato base of the Adventist Church. Welcome. So, brother, I don't want the people in Niagara welcome. Oh, yes, man, we don't reach there so yet. Welcome to the Islington District Church. Welcome. Welcome. To the Dover District Church and welcome to the Highgate District Church. There are two more district to welcome. So welcome. The two more church is what? Oh, welcome to the Claremont District. Welcome. I hope you feel welcome enough. Oh, now welcome to the last church that I'm going to call the district, Claremont. It is Castle Town, when you just wait until me call, you know. Me always leave the best for last when I'm doing my stuff. So I say welcome, all I want to welcome, welcome. Now, Kevin, what about those who are visiting? Visitors, and you're not a part of the Adventist church, you are welcome. Oh, visitors, just visiting us with this morning service. Welcome. A laugh and a laugh for me. Come on, man. I'm putting out all of this effort to welcome you this morning. And I see some face laughing at me. I see some face very serious. I see some face receiving the welcome. And that is why I know, you know, I'm at the Anatabi Church. I'm at the right place. And let me turn to the brochure. I, I remember that Sister Nolan is on the program, you know. So don't think I forget. Sister Nolan is waiting in the wings. She's waiting in the wings. Yes. And she'll be escorted by the angels of the wings on the stage. Now the East, welcome to East St. Mary Adventist Youth Federation. Welcome this day. It is called the Consecration Day, we say. Welcome. Welcome are the worship of Jehovah. Some people call him Yahweh, the Almighty God, I want you to feel welcome because I am welcoming you now. Welcome. And, and Sister Nolan, you know I didn't forget you. You know that, right? Because it cannot be complete if I don't call him Sister Nolan. And she's going to add the cherry and the icing. Happy Sabbath, everyone. How are you doing today? Okay, so my task is to welcome all those who are online. Okay. On Facebook, YouTube. Okay. We just want to welcome you to the East St. Mary Federation, Federation Adventist Youth Federation Consecration Service. Yes. And I do hope that while you're online, you will be blessed and at the end of this service, you will say it was good for you to join. So once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sister Nolan, we're not finished. No. Why? Because we are here to make a joyful noise. Oh. We are looking lovely. So lovely we are down there. In the spirit. Yes. Holy and sanctity. Sanctimonious. So, yes. So I want the praise to come out now. So I want the brethren to praise God in welcoming each other. The person sitting beside her, if you know the person or you don't know the person, I want you to welcome the person. But we're going to do it in this style. All right. Let's just go back to the Bible now. All right. Let's yes, go. Ma Make a the joyful noise unto the, the Lord. Lord. Welcome all ye, all ye lands. Welcome, serve the Lord with gladness. Welcome, come before his presence. We sing it. Welcome, everybody, you are welcome. Everybody, you are welcome. Everybody, you are welcome. Everybody, you are welcome. Welcome. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Now, because we are by the sea, and Jesus is known to be a savior that walked the sea of Galilee and the shore of Galilee, I want you, when you're welcoming the brethren into the, this environment, this atmosphere that is positioned by the sea, in the sanctuary, I want you to stand, man, and look alive and welcome the person beside you. And if anybody don't feel welcome after this round, just raise your hand and praise the Lord. All right? Just raise your hand and praise the Lord. Because when we have done our best to welcome you, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. Amen? Shall we all stand? We're going to make a joyful noise into the Lord. Praise God. All ye, all ye lands, welcome, serve the Lord in gladness. Welcome, come before His presence to sing. Welcome, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Welcome, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Welcome, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Welcome, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome. We're going to meet the Adventist church. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Everybody is welcome. Bye-bye. Do we all feel welcomed? If you're not feeling, if you're not feeling welcome, say Amen. That's how you know who is not paying attention in church, you know. If you are not feeling welcome, say amen. I want us to have a blessed day here today. And in order for us to have a blessed day, we need to hear. Because we're, with everything, we are hearing the word of God today, right? And if we're not listening, if you do not feel welcome, say amen. For those who are welcomed, say amen. Um, one more time, if you're feeling welcome in the house of the Lord this morning, say amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have our greetings. And this, and this will come to us from... All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll be having our greeting. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good. And all the time, God is indeed good. It gives me great joy to be greeting you this Sabbath morning because we are living proof that God is still good. Are we together? Amen. And today I am delighted to, well, you were formally welcomed, but I want to add my bit of welcome to all who would have joined us here at the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Anotta Bay to celebrate this memorable moment, the consecration service for the East St. Mary uh, AY Federation. I want to greet you on behalf of the Islington District of Churches, which includes seven church, consists rather of seven churches, uh, namely the Anata Bay uh, Church, which you are currently at, the Rosend Church, Escher, Robbins Bay, Haywoodall, Hampstead, and of course, is linked on. It is our esteemed joy to have you here with us today, and we are honored to have been chosen to host this wonderful experience. We pray that as we worship today, that it will be a blessing to all of us who take part in it, in particular the newly elected uh, executive of the Federation. And I want to just leave a word of encouragement 
uh, to those who are a part of this executive. It comes from uh, Joshua chapter 1. And three times God says something to Joshua, and this is what I want to leave with you. It says in verse 6, be strong and of a good courage. It says again in verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous. And it says once more in verse 9, have I not commanded thee? Be of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I want you to know today that the positions that you have been asked to fill, the offices that you have been called to serve in, as long as you have surrendered your will and your way to God, then whatever you decide to do will be successful. What did I say? As long as you have surrendered your will and your way to God, whatever you do will be successful. I must also at this time acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, a few special guests, but before I do so, I will, there are a few persons from the Northeast Jamaica Conference, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow, uh, I'm going to invite at this time our youth director for the Northeast Jamaica Conference, uh, a, a, a wonderful colleague, a man of God, and a lover of the youth. Am I right? Am I right? He's not a lover of youth. He's a relatable person, right? Approachable, right? Yes, he goes by the name Raymond Douglas. So at this time, I'm going to invite Pastor Raymond Douglas to bring greetings, and he will uh, formally present uh, those who are here from the conference. Pastor Douglas. Thank you very much, Pastor Mighty. Good morning, everyone. Are you happy in Jesus? Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, indeed, our God is good. This morning, I stand to bring you greetings on behalf of the conference administration, on behalf of the, the youth department of the Northeast Jamaica Conference. This morning, we have... Uh, worshiping with us, we have some individuals from the, the office. We have our, our treasurer and administrator. Sister Thompson, can I ask you to please stand as we welcome you? Uh, we also have Sister Kamika Johnson, a member of our accounting staff. Sister Johnson, will you please stand and be acknowledged? And we also have uh, Sister Omika Thompson, I won't tell you my, 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 my special name for her, but Omika, I'm going to ask you to please stand and be recognized. Now, beside them, there is also uh, somebody who is of uh, importance to, to East St. Mary. Are you with me? We have in the person of Sister Audrey Brown, the Education Director, the Children's Ministries Director, our Children and Adolescent Ministries Director, but she is also your area coordinator. No, sir. No, sir. No, 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 no. Sister Brown, may I ask you please to stand so that the brethren can see not only their education director, but also their area coordinator. This morning, as we assemble in this place to consecrate ourselves to God, we need to understand that that before we can, can answer the call of God, we must consecrate ourselves to him. And consecration is no ordinary and no simple matter. It means that we recognize the call of God. It means that we recognize our need for God to bless our efforts. And this morning I want to commend the East St. Mary Federation officers, the executive members, for answering the call and for turning up this morning to consecrate themselves to God. Now, youth ministry is not an easy ministry. It's not an easy ministry. 
And if we are going to make an impact on the youth of East St. Mary, we need to be empowered by God's Holy Spirit. Amen? And so this morning, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our, the president of the East St. Mary uh, Federation, Sister Campbell. I'm going to invite Sister Campbell to stand. And as I call each Federation official, uh, officer's name, I'm just going to ask you to stand as well. Um, our VP of Operations, Sister Shelley Ann Laidley. Okay, she's standing. Our VP of Adventurers and Pathfinders, Sister Crosdale. Our Secretary, Sister Nolan. Our Treasurer, Sister Roe Anderson. Our PRO, Sister Silvera. Our Parliamentarian, Elder Scarlett, our chaplain, Brother Suarez, our lay sponsor, Sister Roach, our pastoral sponsor, who is very much here and will be officially welcomed a little bit later on. That's why we didn't welcome him in the, in the greetings. Pastor, Pastor, Uncle Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Richard Thorpe, our Bible Connection Coordinator, Sister Marjorie Eaton. Our social, sorry, our sports coordinator, um, Brother Thompson. Social coordinator, Sister Chamberlain. Outreach coordinator, Sister Puran. Music and drama coordinator, Sister Allen Andrews. Our assistant, Sister Allen. Our exam coordinator, Sister Hepburn. Our drill coordinator, Sister Skeen Cooper. Our honors coordinator, Brother Leopold Hall and our Business Development Coordinator, uh, Avian Robinson. This morning, this represents the, the um, executive of the, I think I'm leaving off one person, right, or our VP of Evangelism and Spiritual Development, Sister Tamika Suarez. My apologies. My apologies, Sister Suarez. Please stand and be recognized. And this represents the full complement of the executive of the East St. Mary Federation. I have big expectations. Are you with me? I have big expectations. And, and as we move to the district representatives, I even have bigger expectations. Are you with me? And so from the Islington district, we have Sister uh, Griffiths Thompson and Sister Rose Andrews. From the Highgate district, we have Sister Jackson and Sister Smith. Please stand. From the Castleton district, we have Sister Beckford and Sister uh, Lindo and Mackenzie. From the Claremont district, we have Sister Elaine Roach and uh, Heidel and Henry. And from the Dover district, we also have Sister Josephs and Dante Forbes. And this morning, with all these individuals, we are expecting to move and to shake up East St. Mary. We are expecting that we are going to be mobilizing our youth for Jesus Christ. We are expecting that we are going to be going in the highways and byways and that we are going to be reclaiming our young people for Jesus we're going to be going into the communities and inviting those who do not know Jesus to come into a saving relationship with him. Are you with me? I, 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 I want to solicit your support this morning because this group cannot do it alone. They need your, they need your support. They need your love. They need your prayers. And as we work together, may we work for the master so that one day we will all make it to the kingdom of God. Thank you. At this time, we'll have our president's address by Sister Zoan Campbell. Happy Sabbath, everyone. 
It is with a deep sense of gratitude and humility that I address you as president of the East St. Mary Adventist Youth Federation. I am honored to serve in this capacity and I am excited about the journey that lies ahead of us. As Seventh-day Adventist youths, we are called to be the light in the world, reflecting the love and teaching of Jesus, who is the master teacher. Our mission is clear, to share the three angels' message and prepare the world for Christ's soon return. This mission extends beyond the walls of the church, and thus, each of us play a vital role in this mission. To the officers of the East St. Mary Adventist Youth Federation, thank you for your unwavering commitment and may our shared journey be filled with joy, inspiration, and the fulfillment that comes from serving others selflessly. As we embark on this journey, remember that you are not alone. Our commitment to serving sets us apart. Let our actions speak louder than our words. Whether at school, work, or within our families, let us reflect the compassion, grace, and integrity our Savior exhibited. Through our daily lives, may we draw others closer to the message of hope found in Jesus. To the members of the East St. Mary Federation, you may not hold a position on the executive body. However, your involvement is crucial to the success of our federation. And so I invite you to actively participate, share ideas, and contribute your unique gifts and talents as we create a vibrant and dynamic federation that reflects the love of Christ. I am confident that with God's grace and our collective efforts, we will continue to grow and prosper as a federation. Stay tuned for exciting events and initiatives tailored to meet your interest, from community service projects to evangelism outreach programs to social development programs. Let us all get on board and approach each endeavor with enthusiasm dedication, and a spirit of unity. Together, we can create a positive ripple, ripple effect that extends far beyond our immediate boundaries. As we move forward in action, sorry, as we move forward, let our actions be a testament to the love and grace that we have received, and may our federation be a shining example of the transformative power of faith in action. Okay, to move forward with our program, we will now have the opening hymn by Deandra Hodge, followed by the scripture reading by Brother Suarez. After that, we'll have the pastoral prayer, which will be done by Brother Leopold Hall, and then our anthem of praise by the Dover SDA Youth Group. Happy Sabbath Church. Our opening hymn comes to us from 330, Take My Life and Let It Be. Please stand.
take my voice and to let me sing. Let me always only for my king. For my king. Always only. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. And my gold, and my gold, not a my two darling gold, not a my two darling. Take my will and make it thine. Take my will and bear it shall be no longer mine. Longer. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Royal throne. It shall be thy royal. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At thy feet, its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. check one two happy sabbath and good morning brethren please remain standing for a scripture reading which will be taken from philippians 2 reading verse 5 when you find it please say amen and i will read in your hearing let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus here is a portion of god's holy word get into the attitude of prayer. Those of who, who can kneel, please kneel. And those God and our Father, honor and glory and power to thy most holy and righteous name. Dear Lord, as we come together this morning to consecrate ourselves to you, Lord, I'm asking you to send your Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide and protect us. In a special way, Lord, you know why you have chosen the, the members of the Eastern St. Mary Federation at this time to serve their young people. Lord, you know it will be a very difficult task. But Lord, nothing is difficult if we place ourselves in your hands and you will lead and guide us. And at the end, your name will be glorified and will be praised. In a special way, Lord, I'm asking you, to touch the young people of Eastern St. Mary. Let the life that they live will be an example of Christ, that others looking on will see your son, Jesus Christ, and be drawn to him. In a special way, Lord, I'm asking you to touch the speaker that will address us shortly from now. You have known him from before he was born, Lord. And you know 
that he would be here at this time to deliver your word. So, Lord, I'm asking you, let the words that he speak, will be, that it be your words and not his. And at the end, your name will be glorified and will be praised. In your son's holy and righteous name, I pray. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, potential brothers and sisters, do we all believe that he can do it again? Do we all believe that Jesus Christ can do it again? Amen. And I know that our online viewers and those on NCU Radio, who we so do appreciate, I know that they too do believe that Jesus can and he will at some point in some way do it again. Amen. At this time, we'll have our offertory reading and our offertory song. The offertory will be done by Sister Shelley Ann Laidley, and the special song will be done by Sister Cooper. And following that, we will have one of my favorite segments when we come to church, and that is our children's story. Amen? And this will be brought to us by Sister Joseph. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Will our deacons come forward? All right, we await our deacons to come forward. Offertory reading is coming to us from Malachi chapter 3. I will be reading from verse 6 to verse 11. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. 
Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But he said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But he say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithe and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for he have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Please stand. Please assume an attitude as prayer will now be offered. Our great God and the Father which art in heaven, because you love us, you have placed in Malachi chapter 3 your word about our faithfulness in tithe and the offering. Many a times we rob you saying that we don't. May we who are listening now, who have even listened to your words, look within ourselves and take heed and turn and be fully faithful so you can bless us with the promises that are mentioned in this word, in this your words. Father, we pray and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of our many sins wherein we have robbed you in tithe and in offerings. For Lord, many of us, cry at times saying that the money we earn, it's not doing enough and we're suffering financially. May we all take heed and be faithful in tithe and offering that you will pour out that blessings upon us, that we will not have room enough to receive it. Please, Father, I ask and together we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sabbath Church. Jenny's got more months than she's got money. Works three jobs, she's barely getting by. Bob got a word his mom's been told it's cancer. So many questions, and all of them ask why. We're living in a broken world. A broken world won't give you any answers. Everything is upside down when wrong is right and right but not for long, no, not for long. This broken world is cradled by a savior. And nothing here can take him by surprise. Someday all this hurting will be over. And every tear's been won. broken world, but not for long, no, not for long. Mama spends her waking hours praying, 
Her child's done gone, left everything behind. Daddy's getting tired, his faith is fading. He can't get water from a well that's running dry. We're living in a broken world, and a broken world won't give you any answers. Everything is upside down when wrong is right and right is wrong, but not for long. No, not for long. This broken world is cradled by a savior. And nothing here can take him by surprise. Someday Tears been wiped away and dried, but for now we're living in a broken world, but not for long. No, not for long. This broken world is cradled by a savior, and nothing. But not for long, no, not for long. But for now, we're living in a broken world. But not for long, no, not for long. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Yes, it's now time for the children's story. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath, bigger boys and girls. So our story today is about a little boy. But before I tell you the story, can you give me a name for the little boy? JJ? Oh, we got a suggestion of JJ. Okay, so little JJ loves the Sabbath and he loves to go to church. And his favorite story anytime he goes to church 
Daniel in the lion's den. Yours too. Okay, so we have little JJ here. So following this, JJ loved the faithfulness of Daniel, and he would always tell his friends about Daniel in the lion's den and encourage them to come to church with him. So following this, Daniel, little JJ had a big exam coming up at school, and he was nervous because he was saying he wasn't going to pass. So his teacher suggested that they have lessons on the weekend. But guess what day it fell on? Yes, their lessons fell on the Sabbath. Now, JJ, who wanted to go, could not go because he had to go to church. So, when their first lesson went, he did not go. He went to church, and while his friends were at their lesson, he was at church playing and worshiping with all his brethren and sisters. So, the following Monday, he went to school. He got the lessons from his friends, and he tried to understand them, but he could not. He was now getting worried because the exam was coming up. So, you know what he did? Yes, he prayed to God, and he also told his mommy that he was struggling to understand. No, mommy had a solution. There was a teacher that goes to their church. So she asked if she could help him study for the big exam. And the teacher gladly accepted to help him. So he now had the help he wanted. So all he had to do was get the notes on Monday. And the following Tuesday evening, he would go to the teacher's home. And she would help him and he would understand it. No, he understands the work. Some of his friends don't understand. He starts to teach them it. No, the big exam came. Nervous. But he said, yes, I've studied, I've prayed, and I will go into it. The exam came and passed. After the exam passed, everyone was nervous waiting on the results. Results, they came. Guess who got the highest? Indeed, JJ got the highest score out of all the students in his class. Following this, the teacher asked little JJ, how did you get the highest and you didn't come to my classes? Guess what he told the teacher? Amen. Amen. He told the teacher, I was worried and I prayed. And my faith in God helped me. And God sent help in one of our church sisters. Following this, even the teacher was so moved. He started to go to church with little JJ and some of his friends. So... Even though sometimes he may have little obstacles come up and we think, no, I can't, it's going to stop me. Have, having faith, praying can always help you to solve it. So, listening to our little story, would anyone like to pray? Ooh, we have, we have three prayers. Lord. I pray today will be a nice trip to the exchange. I hope this journey goes on every Sabbath happy. And Lord, I pray this happens to Jason. Lord, as I was at school, my teacher has been bullying me all the day. Lord, I pray you help me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Protect us this whole church, and I hope that this church will be protected by your Holy Spirit. May nothing harm us, may the demons go away. Protect us, protect us in your name. I hope, I hope everybody have a good day. I also wish that, that I and this church will be protected by your forces. Lord, your angels are all around us. Please use them to protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking up this morning, Lord. We live our food for this morning, Lord. Please protect us to be kind of be that, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen.
there anything more amazing than children praying? You know, some children are so shy, but here we're having persons wanting to come up and, and praise the Lord and give thanks to God. Amen? And I pray that we all be a little JJ. I pray that we all stick to the structure of Christ, to the word of Christ, like little JJ. Amen? At this time, at this time we'll have the introduction of the speaker. But and after that, we'll have the meditation song. The introduction of the speaker will be done by Sister Sophia Roach, and the song will be done by the Armstrongs. Our speaker hails from the parish of St. Catherine. He's humble, kind-hearted, fun-loving, and jovial. But above all, he is a man of God. He says he's a working pastor, and indeed he is. He is a man of one wife, Kimberly, and one son, Jaheem. He... <laughs> Have you been Pastor Douglas saying so far? But he loves young people. And even elderly folks, he loves everybody. Pastor is one of those pastors. If you're at a work day, you will catch him with his sleeve rolled up in his water boots and he's mixing cement and whatever else. Pastor um, Richard Thorpe served the Northeast Jamaica Conference as a pastor for the Claremont District of Churches. Before Pastor Thorpe comes to us, the Armstrongs will give us a song of meditation.
Have a Sabbath, everybody. How are you feeling? No, Shav, that's such a powerful messaging song. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Wonderful, wonderful. This is the day. If you're happy and you know it, so praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 God has been good to us. This morning, this morning, I am eight minutes early. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Let me say thank you all for being here. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for the privilege to share with you today. Let me say thanks to Auntie Sophia for her words of introduction. I pray and hope and trust that the word today will find a resting place in your hearts. I won't be long, about 10 or 15 minutes. It, it, it won't be a long, a long word long word from the Lord, and, and so just bear with me. If you want to sleep, just get up and stretch and wash your faces and, or drink some water. Faithful youth, ready for mission. Faithful youth, ready for mission. The word of God says, Philippians 2 and verse 5, says, let this mind be in you, which was also in who? Christ Jesus. And I, I, I want to share another text with you. Numbers 14, reading from verse 24. It says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein to he went, and his seed shall possess it. This morning is especially for my fellow youth leaders. My fellow youth leaders, our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, our hearts are lifted heavenward. Our God in heaven, today you have spared our lives to see another Sabbath, and so we want to tell you, happy Sabbath, Lord, and we ask that you will have your own sweet way today in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if my musicians are ready. I remember as a, a child, we, the, the, the church choir sang a song, ring those golden bells for you and me. Do you know that song, church? So I, I need to hear the, the men singing the bass now, you know. Hallelujah. Uncle Taz, you know the song? You must know the song, man. Sopranos, you ready? Are you ready, Sopranos? After two, one, two. There's a land beyond the river. No, man, no, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Sopranos. Come on, oh man. Come on, man. After two, one, two. Yes. We are, we are the basis. Hallelujah. Hall come on, come on. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. One by one. Again. With the immortal. Golden bells for you. That's right, basis, Pastor Douglas. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, beautiful, come on. The shining river.
Thank you very much. While you were singing, I saw my young people singing. So my young people are not really young. They are, don't say old now, Brother Marlon. You have to say, you have to say mature. Yes, yes. Thank you. Faithful youth, ready for mission. I'll ask my youth leaders, are you ready for mission? Madam President, are you ready for mission? Our dear chaplain, are you ready for mission? Youth, faithful youth, ready for mission. In his book, Gentle Thunder, Max Locado tells the story of Sir John Franklin. It was in 1845 in England. Now, America was beginning, was at the beginning of what was called manifest destiny. That was the idea that they were destined to explore and inhabit and eventually annex the West. And while they were concerned with exploring their own continent, Britain was busy exploring uncharted areas of the world. One of those uncharted areas was called the Northwest Passage. The Northwest Passage is a sea lane that goes around the Canadian Arctic to the Pacific Ocean. And that was Sir John Franklin's mission. His mission was supposed to be the turning point in Arctic exploration. And it was. It was definitely the turning point. But not because he was successful, but because of his failure. Sir John Franklin, sorry, Sir John Franklin's two ships never returned home. Every single one of his crew members died because of Franklin's failure. All future Arctic explorers learned one lesson. They learned that you need to prepare for the journey. The reason that Franklin's journey failed was because of his complete and total lack of preparation. The Arctic exploration journey was supposed to last two to three years. Franklin only took enough supply to last them for 12 days. 12 days. He forgot to take extra fuel. But he did remember, like many of us, we forget everything else except the cell phones. Hello? We're not forgetting the cell phones. You forget the Bible. You forget the hymnal. But you will never forget the cell phones. He forget to take fuel. But he did remember to take enough stuff to make the crew happy and comfortable. He took a library for relaxation. He took an organ for entertainment. He took fine China place settings, cut glass wine goblets, and the finest sterling silverware. While all of the sailors had their dress uniforms, most of them did not even have a winter coat. They were more prepared for tea with the queen than they were for sailing in the Arctic. Of course, as they sailed north, the sea froze solid 
around the ship. When it did, all the men either died of starvation or froze to death. Why did their mission fail? Was it because they did not know where they were going? Not at all. They knew the conditions they were heading into. Was it because they were stupid or inept or clumsy? No. Sir John Franklin and the 138 men who boarded those two ships were known as some of Britain's finest sailors. And at that time, Britain had one of the finest navies in the world. So why did their mission fail? Because they weren't prepared. Why do you fall to the devil's devices? Because you are not prepared. Now even though they knew the conditions they were heading into, they failed to prepare. The question is, why? This church, yes, this church is filled with fine Christian people. This church is filled with people that has PhDs and, and MAs and, and BAs. This church is filled with Christians who have been long enough in this church. We have experience. We have eyes. We have brains, and with that experience and those eyes and that brain that God has given us, we are able to see the conditions that we are heading into. Social collapse marked by things like rampant sexual promiscuity, widespread and publicly accepted disobedience of children to parents, things like publicly accepted homosexuality, even in the church of the living God. The Bible has told us about the Arctic wasteland we are headed into. The question is, are we prepared? Are we Prepared, or are we polishing our silver and turning up our organs? What are we doing? I want to encourage all of you to get prepared for the mission. Can I remind the people of God today that the Arctic wasteland extend to the church of God? You will have opposition. Pastor Douglas, you will have opposition in the youth department. Northeast Jamaica Conference, there will be opposition within the conference. There will be opposition in East St. Mary Federation. There will be opposition right here at the Anata Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church. You will have opposition from everyone and everywhere. It's in the youth department. It's in the federation. It's in your church. It is right beside you. That sister, that brother will do something to offend you. There will be opposition when you stand up and speak out for that which is right. But I say to you, stand just the same. Let me step a little further to say to my youth leaders that if you don't have backbone, youth work is not for you. If you don't have backbone, youth work is not for you. 
for we will have to make some tough decisions. It is everywhere. It is in your homes. It is at your workplace. We must keep in mind in all of that, in all of the criticism, in all of the ism and the schism, in all of you being bad-minded, in all of people are tear down and I curse you out, you must be cognizant of the fact that we are all servants. The question is, are we ready to serve? Servant, to be a servant, thank you, my brother, to be a servant requires a mental shift. You hear me, church? It requires a mental shift and a change in your attitudes. For God is more concerned about what we do rather than, sorry, God is more concerned about why we do what we do rather than what we do. In other words, what if your motive for doing what you're doing? Is it, is the engine behind that which you do fuel by love? For if that's not the case, you are misrepresenting God and misrepresenting the truth. Permit me to share three attitudes of the mind of a servant. Only three. I told you I won't be long. Only three. Three attitudes about the mind of a servant. Number one, as servants, we think more about others than ourselves. Servants focus on others, not themselves. Paul said, here Paul, one of my favorite writers, forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. My fellow youth leaders, are you willing to crucify self? For the sake of the mission. Jesus. Emptied himself. By taking on. The form of a what? Servant. Hence. Philippians says. Let this mind. The mind of Christ. Which is the mind of a. Servant. Be in you. So if you are not willing. Step out. It's okay. It's okay to step back. God understands. Moses. Moses said, Lord, I can't do it. Ask somebody else. God had to train him. God had to, had to reteach Moses. Moses went. So it's okay. If you think you can't manage, it's okay. But if you need help, God is available to help you. Number two, servants think about their work, not what others are doing. Now watch me. You have your responsibilities. Watch yourself. Be mindful. And do what you're doing faithfully. Sorry for the colloquial term. But no watch me. They do not compare. Nor criticize. Nor compete with others. Servants that compete with servants. Did you know. That competition. Between God's servant. Is illogical. Did you know that. It don't make no sense. Why? Anybody can tell me why? Because what? Same work. We are a part of the same team. 
same reward. So it makes no sense of competing. Paul said, we will not compare ourselves as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. What a thing. What a word. You know better than me. Me know better than you. We are all equal at the foot of the cross. But let me step a little further to say that there is no place for petty jealousy between servants. When you're busy serving, hear me now. When you're busy serving, you don't have time to be critical. Hello? You have some people in God's church. All them do is sit and criticize. Destructive criticism too. I'm not talking about constructive criticism. All they do is to sit and chat people and criticize people. Have nothing good to say. Remember growing up, my grandmother said, devil find work, get idle hands. And I come to realize a choosing thing. Yes, choosing thing. It is, <laughs> this is the part I love, Pastor Douglas. You know, if you agree with me. But this is the part I love. It is not your responsibility, whoever you are, whatever your position is, wherever you are from, whatever your status in life is, whatever the position you hold in God's church, it is not your responsibility to evaluate the master's other servants. Not your job. That responsibility belongs solely to the master. Number three. Servants, my youth leaders, servants think of ministry as an opportunity, not an obligation. Ministry is an opportunity, not an obligation. For we are privileged to be co-workers with the master. What a God. What a God. Servants, they enjoy helping people. Meeting people's needs and doing ministry. Hear me now. Youth ministry, youth work. I know you know. I know you know. I know you know. But them say repetition deepens what? Impression. Service. Sometimes will take you to places that if it were left to you, you would not go. Like to the infirmary and visiting the prison and going to the different children homes, to the hospital. Somebody needs a, a, a bathroom to be erected, youth ministry. That is service. That is what we are called to do. We are not only called to put on programs within God's church. No, we are called to serve. And to serve the whole man. The whole man is not just the spiritual aspect of man, you know. The whole man is the spiritual, the physical, the mental, the emotional, the psychological, the, the, the financial, the what? The social. Every other all you can think of. That is why God calls us to serve. I wonder if you understand the mission. Ellen White says that Christ's method alone brings true success. Ministry of healing. Christ's method alone. And so our mission is not first, hear me now. And the youth director asked me to speak. So anybody that gets into trouble, or the youth director, right, Pastor? 
Our mission is not firstly to erect a tent and preach. For you cannot preach to a hungry man if the parents don't have the resources to send the children to school, you can't preach Jesus to them. And so we must attend to the social needs. And after we befriend them, then like Jesus, we will bathe them. Follow me. <laughs> what a God we serve. Servant. Servants serve without complaining, without finding faults. Servants serve the Lord with gladness. I'm finished. I almost said like our good pastor, I'm done. Here's a point I want you to ponder. Did you know that for you to be a servant, you must think like a servant? You must think like a servant. Hear this now. If we are truly servant at heart, then when we are treated like servants, we won't feel any way. Hello? Here's a question to you. Are you more concerned about being served? Or are you more concerned about finding ways to serve others? Youth leaders, conference workers, church members, Pastor Douglas, and I'm speaking to the preacher as well. In closing, I want us to be mindful that our purpose on earth is greater than our comfort on earth. You hear me? Let me say it again. Our purpose on earth is greater than our comfort on earth. You hear that church? Are you listening? You get it? What is your purpose? Don't answer. What is your purpose on earth? Not until you find your purpose, you will continue to live comfortably. But the day you find your purpose, you will break up your folly ground. Finally, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What, what a word. What a word. We must be servants at heart before we can decide to serve the youth of East St. Mary. At this time, I want to invite our Federation officers uh, to stand. I'm, I'm going to invite the church at large to stand. I'm going to also ask our Federation officers to just come to the front as we move into the uh, consecration aspect of this service. I'm going to invite the congregation to stand. All our Federation officers, I'm just going to ask to stand at the front. You're going to face the audience. And uh, as you come, please come with your program so that we can go through the litany together. Uh, those of you, uh, our elders, our elders who are in the house this morning, we're going to also invite you to stand by.
and I hope there are members of the congregation with uh, programs, with the litany in them as well. This aspect of the service seeks to present ourselves to God. As human beings, we can do nothing without Jesus Christ. And so throughout history, God's people have dedicated their churches, their homes, their possessions, their lives to God in recognition of His Lordship, sustenance, and mercy. And today, the executive of the East St. Mary Adventist Youth Federation, they desire to dedicate their gifts, their time, their talents, their creative abilities to this ministry and the work of Almighty God. As leader of this dynamic group of young people, I present myself and them to you and ask that you lead us in this service of dedication. Present us to the Lord so we can be consecrated, blessed, and sanctified to do his work. Madam President, I do recognize the challenges that you and the other Federation officers will face in leading God's people during this period of Earth's history. But I am confident, though, that if God takes you to it, he will certainly lead you through it. I will therefore lead you in, the, in dedicating your lives and services to God. Lord, on this solemn occasion, I present to you the members of the East St. Mary Adventist Youth Federation. As they seek to consecrate and dedicate their lives to you and your service, I ask that you bless them, that you guide and protect them and direct their efforts. Give them vision and wisdom. Guide their thoughts and actions. And daily renew their minds with fresh ideas directly from your throne room. Lord, in the days of old, when your prophets were leading your people through wildernesses, seas, rivers, and plains, you were there with them every step of the way. And so, Holy God, we ask that you be with these officers as they conceptualize plans to keep your people, especially the young, ground, rooted and grounded in your truth. I call upon the elders present today to assist and to support the Federation officers with guidance and other means as they seek to do the Lord's work. Elders. I also call upon the entire congregation here today who are witnesses of this, of this consecration ceremony. I call upon you, congregation, to provide support and guidance for the Federation officers as they claim, as they proclaim God's glory through their efforts. I am indeed confident that if the officers of this federation dedicate their lives to you, you will lead, guide, and direct them. I present them to you in dedication and consecration. Please bless them, their families, and their efforts. Lord, as we pray, we await your blessings. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, 
this afternoon, we stand before you. Because we recognize our need for you. You have called. And these officers, they have answered. But Lord, the road ahead of them may be rough. At times it may be tough. But we pray, Lord, that they will be able to overcome because your spirit is with them. Lord, there are times when they may not know where to go or what path to take. But I pray in those moments that you will remind them that you are the way maker. I pray, Lord, that when they, when they can't see a way forward, that you will step in and just create a way for them. Lord, when the challenges come and when the going gets tough, I pray that they will learn to lean on Jesus. When they get tired and frustrated and they may be at their wit's end, may they just cling to you just a little while longer. Lord, we're not perfect. And sometimes we fail, fault and fail. But we pray, mighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will be with each Federation officer. May they stand like a brave with their face to the foe. May they never retreat. May they never surrender. May they never back down because they are not depending on human power and on human agencies. But, but may they always be empowered by your Holy Spirit. We pray, oh God, that you will bind this executive with cords of love and cords that cannot be broken. We pray that you will unite them with, with, with heavenly force and, and that you will cause them to work for the salvation of the youth of East St. Mary. Lord, there is a great work to be done. And, 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 and sometimes it is, it is easy to get tired and frustrated by just thinking of all the things. That needs to be done. But Lord, I pray that you will grant inspiration. That you will give guidance. That you will give wisdom. And that you will allow this federation to, to do its work. Not by might. Nor by their power. But by your Holy Spirit. We ask that they will depend on you daily. And that they will allow you to work in, through, and for them. And this is our asking. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. You may be seated. As you return to your seats, I pray that the Spirit of God will attend you. Wherever you go and whatever you may do, I pray that as a federation that God will grant you success. And again, I want to appeal to the congregation at large to get involved. This group of individuals, they can do nothing without your support. I thought I'd hear amen. No, sir, that, that, that amen too weak and thank you, thank you. They cannot do anything without your support. Whether it be sports evangelism, they can't do it alone. Whether it is, it, it is community outreach, they can't do it alone. The spiritual programs, they can't have them all for themselves. We all must be there to support and to share. And so I pray that as we work together in East St. Mary, that we will see a difference. We will see our young people spiritually uplifted, physically uplifted, emotionally uplifted. All the alleys that Pastor spoke about today. We're going to work on each one. Are you with me? We're going to work on each one so that our young people can grow and actualize in Jesus. And at the end of it all, may we all make it to the kingdom of God because of the work that we will do.
brave house and true love for each other. We have had so many big but empty words. So we come before your face asking for your grace. Bring your people to a state of kingdom life. Restore your church again. Touch your people once again with your precious holy hands. We pray, let your kingdom shine upon this earth through a living glorious church, not for temporary deeds, but to restore authority and power. Let a mighty rushing wind blow in. Touch your people once again. Lord, we see your tired servants and your broken, wounded soldiers. Oh, how much! We need your precious healing hand. We need the power of the cross as the only source for us as we face and find a battle cry. Restore your church again. Touch your people once again. With your precious holy hands, we pray, let your kingdom shine upon this earth, through a living glorious church, not for temporary deeds, but to restore our rushing wind blowing and touch your people once again let a mighty rushing wind blow in and touch your people Amen, church. Amen. We've sat and we've listened, and we have surely been blessed, right? Now, at this time, I'd like to please to stand with me as we do our benediction, singing M422, Marching to Zion. Turn 
Close our eyes as we close in prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, I'd like to thank you for today. Lord, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity you've given us to come into your presence and worship your name unmolestedly. Lord, I'd like to thank you, Lord, for this great congregation of youth, youth that have proven that they are ready to serve you. So, Lord, I thank you for this timely message reminding us that we should be servants. Lord, please help that this message was not, has not fallen on stony hearts so that it will be recepted, received and accepted so that it will be shared with whoever we come in contact with. Please be with us throughout the remaining of this year's Sabbath and please be with what is provided so it will give us substance for our bodies. This is all I ask in your son's name. Amen. <laughs> Dismiss us, Lord, with blessings we pray, as from thy worship we go our way. Thy delights come, live on through the day, set in thy Amen, amen, amen. I pray that we have all been blessed. And as we come to a close, we will now have our vote of thanks by Sister White. Amen. Was it indeed good to have been in the house of the Lord? Was it indeed good to have been in the house of the Lord today? Were you blessed? Are you ready to go out and work and save some souls for Jesus Christ? Yes? Amen. Now, this program today did not just happen. 
some planning had to go in, in, into it. Amen? And so when persons have put in the hard work, we should show gratitude. Amen? And so today, it is my privilege to bring the vote of thanks today. Um, excuse me. So first and foremost, let us give, say thanks to the E. St. Mary Federation. And when I say give thanks, I want everybody to give a hearty amen. Amen. So let us give thanks to the E. St. Mary Federation for all the work that they put in for today. Amen. Our host pastor, Pastor Odeon Mighty. Our NEJC Youth Director, Pastor Raymond Douglas. Amen. Our speaker for today, Pastor Thorpe. Amen. All our conference workers. All our conference workers. Amen. The Anata Bay Church members for their accommodation. Amen. The musicians. Our media team. Our wonderful singers. Our online viewers. The NCU radio listeners. Our visitors slash soon-to-be brothers and sisters. And our actual brothers and sisters in the congregation today. Amen. Now, there's always one name I don't, I don't, I shouldn't have put on the list, but I put it on the list, you know. But this name, I don't think should be written. Yeah? Because this name is too, it's too, it's too, you know, it's too divine. It's too worthy to be on a list. It should just always be in our thoughts, always be in our minds. And I think we all know who I'm talking about. But for Jesus, we don't, say, we don't just want to say amen. We want to make it a little extra for Jesus. Amen? So we're all going to sing thanks, thanks. 